I challenge you to come and see if this isn't real. I challenge you to come and bring those that are sick and afflicted and watch God do it. It's not me. It's not the people in here. It's the environment of Christ being in our midst. He's the healer. And there's nothing impossible with God if you can just believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and command her to have plenty of healing this heart. Stop the blood and the water from running into her liver. Let the Chicago glory touch her from the top of her head down to the soul of her head. And cut the rope of Christ's head. So run down the Mahaprabhu Sita Tay. He shared the Hapa head take on fire. Yellow Rossi. Come on, honey, get out. Hold on. Be careful so you don't trip over that. But I want you to reach out from my back as I start walking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. because her grandmother and grandfather have raised her up in church. But your life is not your life. Your life belongs to the Lord. Through dedication and prayer and through the love of God and through the love for your family and the family loving you. She's got a sister named Paisley. Brendan Derrick She's four years old. Brendan Derrick has my TV show going on on Facebook. And she's saying, hi, Pastor Bob. She's waving at the TV. And she gets mad because I don't wave back. 
So Brenda has to explain to her. Do you remember them little munchkins I got that, that, that talk? You say something? Well, anyway, I told her to, to hold it up to the phone, phone. And I said, Pastor Bob loves you. And it turns around and says, Pastor Bob loves you. Pastor Bob loves you. Pastor Bob loves you. That's the cutest little thing. Go back to what I was telling you. You all need Jesus. Is that what you're saying? You believe that? Are you ready for an experience that it's going to change your entire life? You're going to find yourself wanting to hear about the Bible where they can play it and that you absorb it because you are going to be a minister of the gospel. You are going to be an evangelist. I see you not much older than what you are now. Maybe two years old than what you are. But I see you on fire for God going back and forth across a platform. And the Word of God just flowing out of your lips. I see that. I see the devil trying to attack you in every different way, but they can't touch you. God has put a shield of angels around you. And you're going to find yourself doing things for God that you never even dreamed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Raise your hands. Y'all see this? Y'all see this? She has learned well. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare a double portion of the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon her. Right now, in Jesus' name, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Her whole body is shaking. The whole body is shaking. You don't fake this stuff. Her eyes was... I used to be up here preaching and she'd be sitting back there and she'd be like this, watching me. God had her watching me. And that's what it's all about. If you train a child in the way it should go, in the end it shall not depart from it. What'd that feel like? Weird. Weird? <laughs> come, come here, man. Turn around. Look at her face. She's still shaking. That's worth it all, ain't it, Brenda? And I didn't have to German cider either. <laughs> I used the, uh, the uh, it's called oil. <laughs> this is your special oil. And you definitely know what to do with it, don't you? John, come here. I met John in a tent revival. And I guess Adora kept telling him about it. And that's what brought you there. Is that right? And he saw God heal one of his friends of Asian orange. You that were there know that's an incurable disease. Thanks to your government. And he was in that kind of a, a chair where you sit and push, I think, wasn't it? Walker. 
braces from his knees down. Went to a Bible study every day, was it? Every, every Friday. <clears throat> every, fr every Friday. Every Friday. And there was how many in the Bible study? Probably about 30 of us. Now, I don't know what they were studying because God healed that man that night and he took off walking and he went back to the Bible study. That was on a Sunday night, was it? He went back the following Friday to the Bible study, walked in without his walker, and he tried to tell them that God healed him, and they said, we don't believe in that. Not all of them? Well, some of them. Let's put it that way. But that made a change in John because John realized that was real because I did not know this man. And John and I have become, and Adora have become really good friends. And I want to thank you for making it possible. For going to El Salvador. I'm getting so many people wanting to be my friend. And I don't know how to do that because I ain't got time to sit there and text. My phone rings all night long. But I'm hearing them say, we can't wait till you come back. I guess we're going to have to go again. Sometime soon. <laughs> I can't go unless she says yes. Hey, who's ahead? Uh, I know, <laughs> the neck turns ahead. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. I don't have a wife and I'm happy. <laughs> sure. Hey, while we were while we were down there in El Salvador, we uh, we went to four different churches and we gave offerings to three of them. One of them uh, was an independent church. Uh, but what they had done, they had prayed, prayed and fasted for a month for Bob. And uh, you know, they really didn't. They didn't know me. I only knew one person that went to that church. But they opened it up to us. And the amazing thing is, Bob got up and he started to preach, and that was it, because that church was ready. And they just came up, and uh, <laughs> they were ready. But what, what I was getting at is uh, we bought all new Sunday school furniture for that church. Uh, we bought new uh, furniture for the Assembly of God for their uh, sanctuary. And then uh, Bob sent money to uh, another church the called Mega, The Rock. The Mega Church. And uh, that's to help put a roof on it. And when that church is done, they'll, they'll be able to seat 7,000 people. I mean, it, it'll be amazing. Thank you. What happened in that, where they fasted for me, you had to see this, and, and Derek is going to make a video. It's an eight-minute video um, of me praying for, for people in the mega church, the woman getting out of the wheelchair, and then her pushing me, running clear across. But there was a woman in that church when we walked in and we sat down, she was she was to our far right, and she was in this wheelchair and she's going, and her legs were going all kinds of way. First of all, you would think, well, she's possessed. It was palsy. Well, I prayed for three three or four people, I think, and I couldn't take it no more. I had to come down off the stage, pray, and then I went over and I sit down in front of this woman. And it's on tape. You can see it for yourself. She had not walked in four years. Had not taken a step. She'd been in the wheelchair for ten years. So I sit down in front of her. My interpreter, Yuri, would interpret because everything I had to say, they had to say. And she told her that she had not walked in four years. And I said, do you believe that you're going to walk today? She said, yes. I said, do you believe that God can heal? Yes. I said, do you believe when I pray for you, it's going to happen right now? Yes. Amen. See, that's the kind of faith they have. Amen. Some of you, you got to prime people to get faith. You didn't down there. So I got her up, and she walked from here to Mark. Took nine steps, I believe it was. Walked her back, and the usher set her back down in the wheelchair, and I went over, and her, her shaking 
wasn't like this. It was like this. So I went over and I prayed for a couple more people and it aggravated me. She's still sitting in that wheelchair and I said, get out of that wheelchair and so help me God. John, did she not leap out of that wheelchair? She come up out of that wheelchair like somebody getting ready to grab the moon. And, and that place went nuts. They've been praying for a revival. They want revival. And let me tell you something. Revival is breaking out all over the world. There's people even being killed because they're preaching a different gospel than the religion that they were raised in. So you need to keep people like that in your prayers. You need to pray for the missionaries that are going to do that job and the preachers that are going over there. And I do want to go back. It's his fault. <laughs> Yours too. <laughs> because God's got some. I did say, I remember stating that God was going to do something special down there. Did I not say that? Something of that nature? That's nothing compared to what he's getting ready to do. They had a little prayer meeting, about 10 or 12 people. They told the people that uh, there's a preacher from Columbus, Ohio, or the United States coming down there, and they put out 250 chairs, was it? They blocked off this whole street. And they were standing all around, people laying out everywhere. And the cutest thing I saw is this woman. She looked like a nun. She had this towel that was wrapped up here, and it flipped over the back. And, and that's what made, made me think she was a nun. And she come down there, and I said, you want God to heal you? And she said, yes. And she had her hands out like this. So that made me think she was a nun. <laughs> so anyway, I prayed for her. You ever see that movie, Happy Feet? That's what she did. Them little feet was going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> And then all of a sudden she dropped her knees and it fell on her face. They know how to let go. And I hope to God that you can let go because you don't know what's getting ready to happen. I felt this for a long time. I had people say the days of miracles like A.A. Allen, Leroy Jenkins, Jack Cole, and all these preachers that had these big, big auditoriums and miracles. Uh uh. God said the latter church and the former church are going to be in one. The double portion anointing is coming. And you better get in the way of it or get out of the way of it. Because if you're in the way, you're going to get caught up and you're going to be so happy because when the sound of that trumpet comes, we're out of here. We're out of here. Still not sleeping? Somebody got a good sucker punch hit. I'll take it. I'll hit me as hard as you can. Knock me out. I'll take it. I'll, I'll be back tonight. Take your glasses off. <laughs> he have he's having serious problems with sleeping. Jesus' name, I command you, Satan, to lose your hold. And God, give him rest. From the top of his head, God, to the soles of his feet. Loose your hold.
Don't sit there. Just look at me. <laughs> Come on. Brenda, you've had so many miracles. God has touched you in so many ways where the wires were coming out of your shoulder. God gave you a rotor cup replacement and all kinds of stuff. Healed your cancer. And you know, the Bible says that they asked Jesus what sin they had committed. And he said none. That it was for the glory of God to be manifested. That you could realize that God is a miracle worker and a healer. I want you to lay your hand right here. From the top of her head, Lord, to the soles of her feet. Let your virtue touch her and heal her right now. Amen and amen. Here it comes. Here it is. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name, I curse this. Amen and amen. I'm going to steal one of your mints. <laughs> I meant it, I stole it. Yes, sir. I can't help it. I was just raised in the church. Her name is Evangelist Lala Price. She said, only thing, I, I don't have to lay my hands on no one. She said, I just wave my hand. Thank you, Lord. She said, I know what the Lord can do. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And that's where I get it from, from my mom. That's why I always throw my hand straight up <laughs> this way. This way. Get into the grievance. Yep. And preaching and giving the word. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. Well, the, the man or the woman's not the healer. They're just the answer. Yes, sir. Yep. I've seen Reverend Jenkins in a crusade where he could not get down off of the platform. There were so many people. And he took his hand like this and he went across. The, and we carried over a thousand canes and crutches out of one auditorium. And didn't have to touch nobody. Because he's not the toucher. I want to add to that story for some of you that don't know this. A.A. A. Allen was a man of visions. He saw a lot of visions. He went up in the New York Tower and saw the destruction of America. About 13 days, I believe it was, before Leroy Jenkins even got his arm cut off. He was in the middle of the service and said, oh my God. He said, I see Jesus walking down the aisles. He said, no, it's not Jesus, it's man. No, it's Jesus. He went back and forth several times. He said, no, it's a man because his arm's cut off. He said, that miracle is going to happen under the big tent. Jesus is raising up a prophet. He's coming. Thirteen days later, Leroy showed up there with a pillow and his arm all gangrene in the back of the tent. And R.W. Shambach, Mr. Rogers, whatever one it was, both of them said, there's that man back there that had his arm cut off. He died three times. God brought him back. See, God's got a way of getting our attention. And sometimes it's through tragedy. Sometimes it's through pain. Sometimes it's through sickness. Sometimes it's through a blessing. When Jim Whittington was in jail here in Columbus, God told me to go over there and give him $100. And we sit and chit chat back and forth. And Jim had been in the ministry much longer than me. And I loved to hear him sing. And I loved to hear him preach. And I told him, I said, Jim, I said, may I pray for you before 
I leave? And he said, yes. I said, I'm leaving you $100 down there. And he thanked me. I said, as we put his hands up and I prophesied. I said, God's going to give you a song, a new song. It's going to be a song that will be touching to everybody. And the song went a little bit like this. I've been up. I've been down. Oh, yes, Lord. I've almost hit the ground, but God's brought me up. Oh, yes, Lord. And I seen him sing that song two or three different times, and people got touched. When, if I could get all of you right now to get your mind strictly on the Lord and just think about what you want God to do for you starting this very moment, God can do it. He can go outside of these walls and get somebody that you've been praying for and put a hook in their jaw and bring them in. He can take you and protect you on your job. Dangerous job. He can take when you're working, keep something from falling on you. I have a friend of mine Dave Burton up in Delaware, his grandson and him was going to cut this tree down. And Dave told him to take the saw and cut it down. He said, I don't feel right, Grandpa. I'm not going to do that. He said, yeah, go ahead and do it. No, I'm not going to do it. You need to leave that tree alone. Dave grabs the saw and he goes over there and cuts it. Well, his grandson was walking away and all of a sudden he heard this funny noise and he looked and there was Dave flying through the air. A tree coming and smacked him upside the head. He was in intensive care at the hospital. 22 staples. I don't know how many stitches, but 22 staples in a coma. And it didn't look good at all. But you know something? God had his hand because that boy and his kids worked up in Delaware and helped Reverend Jenkins do so much on that church. You know what? He got saved when he came out of the coma been going to church all those years up there saw all those miracles but it, t it took near death experience to make him wake up and get saved some of you think because you got saved 20 years ago 50 years ago 5 days ago whatever that that makes a difference the bible says to renew your vows do your first one Thank you.